The judge in Donald Trump's hush money trial excused a juror today after she expressed concerns about being publicly identified as well as her ability based on the conversation of what was going on in her life to actually be impartial. Now, we know that there were seven jurors that had already been chosen coming into today. So you're probably wondering which of the seven is it? And it's actually someone that you've heard a little bit about. You remember this? Number two. A nurse from the Upper East Side with a master's degree. She's not married, has no kids, and lives with her fiance who works in finance. She gets her news from the New York Times, Google, and CNN. She said two things that really stuck out. One, quote, I don't really have an opinion of Trump. And quote, no one is above the law. I'm not so sure about Jara number two. Yeah, he's not so sure about juror number two. Well, he doesn't have to be. She's not a juror anymore, and we'll give you the full details. But also, I'm not so sure about Jesse Waters that he finds so inherently suspicious that you wouldn't have an opinion on Trump. Sort of telegraphing that he believes, come on, everybody hates Trump, um, and that nobody's above the law. And Jesse Waters obviously thinks that some people very much should be. So, uh, by the way, this is not my speculation that that's the juror, it's been identified. That she was identified on Fox News targeted, and thus she's not a juror anymore. And let's just pause for a second to acknowledge Jesse Waters won. Jesse Waters got what he wanted. And I don't just mean about this particular juror. I, I'm sure he has since forgotten that she even existed or whatever. He just wants to get anyone he can off. Because Jesse Waters is an unpaid aide to the Trump legal effort. And the legal effort has only one strategy. Just please delay, please, please delay until he's president. They can't lock him up if he's already president, please. Hey, I'm glad you're here. Listen, in order for the damage report to keep on going, we need viewers like you to become a member on YouTube. Can you click the join button on YouTube today? Thank you. You see, Jesse Waters, like everyone in right wing media, has absolutely no faith that a case can be made that Donald Trump did not commit the crime. They know that he committed the crime. They just don't want the case to go forward because of how terrified they are of that. And so, by the way, we had the seven, we lost this one, and we'll give you more details on her. Another juror has actually been dismissed as well over concerns that they had misrepresented themselves in the initial questioning. And that at least seems like, okay, a case can be made. If you lied about yourself, about your past, then in that case, you probably should not be on the juror, jury because if you're already lying before the trial even begins, can we assume that you will be honest? That's a case to be made. This juror, was apparently either terrified of what might happen to her once her identity came out, since she was already being targeted by Fox News. Um, and by the way, Donald Trump spread the video of Jesse Waters. Just uh, Donald Trump is under a gag order, specifically stopping him from attacking jurors. He shares on True Social a video of Jesse Waters attacking and questioning the impartiality of a juror. We see the effect of that in that a day later she's no longer a juror, and we're supposed to pretend that this is not a violation of the gag order. Okay, that's fun. But anyway, as a result of that, we no longer have the seven, we have five. So now we need seven to close out the 12 main jurors. We still need more alternates. The idea is just drag it out, man. It was looking up until today, like probably by the end of the week, we could have all the jurors we need. And that the actual opening of the trial could start on Monday. That's what the judge said. It is looking much less like that right now. And so again, this is the right wing strategy and it's currently working. I wanna give you a little bit more information about her because it might not be immediately clear why based on what you saw from Jesse Waters, she should have had to remove herself or had wanted to remove herself. So she said that she definitely has concerns now about what has been publicly reported about her. Apparently it was enough that friends, colleagues and family contacted her asking if she had become a juror. There was that much information out that people were like, Oh, that's her, that's Kelly, and her name's not Kelly, but like it's enough to identify her. And she said, I don't believe at this point that I can be fair and unbiased and let the outside influences not affect my thinking in the courtroom, which is, that's admirable that she can admit that. The judge says, we just lost what probably would have been a very good juror, which is obviously bad for the prosecution, bad for justice, I suppose, but good for the accused and likely guilty. After accusing her, by the way, the judge apparently wanting to avoid a little bit of this going forward, instructed reporters to no longer detail where a prospective juror works, saying I have the legal authority to do it in terms of blocking the news media from reporting certain information. And look, we played the Jesse Waters thing, but I will honestly say that 
The fact that so much information about them was coming out always felt pretty weird. Why do we need to know if one juror is a nurse or if another is from Ireland? Why do we need to know any of that at all? Beyond need, why do we want to know that? I honestly don't know. I don't know what that has to do with literally anything. It has nothing to do with their qualifications, their ability to be fair and impartial. It was very weird. And so if the judge does end up clamping down on that, uh, in pursuit of actually being able to have a trial in the first place, that seems perfectly fair to me. And so uh, she's been, she was largely identified, no longer thought that she could be impartial. She's removed herself. There's this other individual who apparently had torn down some sort of political posters or something like that and had not obviously revealed that. And it implied that he hadn't faced any sort of legal trouble. And again, that one seems more reasonable. It's weird in a way that in real time, they're digging so deep into what everyone has ever done or said. But I get that the stakes are high, and so that seems somewhat reasonable to me. But, and we're not gonna focus on this a lot today. Maybe we'll return to it tomorrow. The judge is showing a willingness to at least threaten taking serious measures when it comes to releasing this identifying information. I would love to see the judge take equally strong measures in actually doing something about the fact that Donald Trump is now on a daily basis violating the gag order over and over and over again. And at this point, I'm not even mad at Donald Trump about it. I was maybe mad on Monday, Tuesday a little bit. It seems unfair, seems bad for the system. But at this point, what do we expect Donald Trump to do? He did it all in the lead up to the weekend. He did it over the weekend. He's been doing it throughout the week. The, the, the prosecution goes to the judge like three or four days ago now and says, hey, um, could we like fine him $1,000 for these posts where he's intimidating the witness? And the judge is like, hmm, maybe I'll get back to you in a week. So yeah, he's gonna violate it. Even if you do the fines, what the hell does he care about that? It's not gonna be paid by him, it's gonna be paid by some MAGA person who lives in Alabama. So of course he's going to do it. The judge is basically asking for it at this point. And so he keeps doing it. And it's with it's with his own comments about Michael Cohen and about Stormy Daniels. It's every single day sharing other people unfairly attacking the, the, the witnesses and the potential jurors. And in this case, the fact that he had Waters saying they're catching undercover liberal activists. He's talking about people who once tweeted or whatever. And bear in mind, he is advocating for MAGA people to try to hide their political opinions and political behavior to get on there. So this isn't an even, even a principled stance that any of them are taking. So the judge absolutely has to do something. And the prosecution is trying. They're asking for him now beyond just the $1,000 fine to potentially be found in contempt which theoretically could send him to jail. Again, I highly doubt that. But at this point, we all have to ask, how many strikes does this guy get? Remember yesterday, he was saying he thought that his strikes were unlimited. They appear to be, not for jurors, but certainly for getting out of jail free.